for the first time, we are hearing from race car driver Kyle Larson following his highly publicized suspension from NASCAR. Back in April, Larson was fired from his racing team for using a racial slur during a public virtual race racing event. In his first TV interview, Larson speaks with CBS News special correspondent James Brown about race in America, those he has hurt, and why he is hoping for a second chance. I know deep down I'm not a racist. I said a, a racist word, and I can fully understand why people would label me a racist. Larson's going to clear him. Kyle Larson, the 28-year-old six-time NASCAR winner, is one of the sport's rising stars. But back in April of this year, Larson was heard using the N-word while speaking on headset during a virtual racing event. You can't hear me? Hey, Kyle, you're talking to everyone, but What prompted you calling your friend, who is white, who was a spotter for you, why did you call him the N-word? I had raced with him in Australia, and, and you know, the group that we were with kind of used the word casually as a, as a greeting. You know, I didn't use it in a way to you know, degrade or, or insult anyone. Now, when you say that it's kind of a term of endearment or it wasn't meant to be offensive, how is it that it's in use, and no matter what the circle, and people don't take offense at it? You know, it's not my word to use. You know, I need to get it out of my vocabulary, and I have. Larson's world quickly unraveled. He was fired from his racing team, lost his sponsors, and suspended indefinitely from NASCAR. What does the word mean to you? What did it mean to you then? What does it mean to you now? I guess I didn't think of, of how it took African Americans and, and probably in their thoughts, took them back to, you know, slavery and things like that and injustice and stuff that they have had to work you know, so hard to overcome. Okay, this is the Kyle that I know. This is the Kyle who said this. Now, which one is real? Michelle and Anthony Martin are the co-founders of Philadelphia's Urban Youth Racing School, an organization that connects young people of color with the racing industry. Larson has been involved with the program for years. As divisive as the rhetoric is at the public level in the square, if you will, Michelle, many people wouldn't step up, you and your husband, to be supportive in a situation like this at a time like this. Mm -hmm. Why were you supporting Kyle Larson publicly? I had the opportunity to meet with Kyle face to face after it happened. One of the things in looking in his eyes for the sincerity was, are you sorry that you got caught? Or are you really sorry that this happened? With our very first conversation post the N-word situation was the fact that he wanted to learn. It was, it was, it was very emotional because I, I, I look up to him a lot. Jasir yeah. Fisher knows Kyle Larson well. The 18-year-old mechanical engineering student connected with Larson during his time at the racing school. And the two met face to face this summer to talk about what happened. When it happened, and it just had me thinking, like, as a African-American male, a lot of people in America see me as that word. And, like, for somebody like him to say that, it was, like, nothing, nothing less than heartbreaking. And for him to, like, speak to me, it gave me more reassurance that I can still look up to him and trust him. You said when most people in America probably look at you as being that N-word. Yes. You wanted to make sure that he wasn't thinking the same thing about you. Yes. Why should anyone believe that there's been a significant and real change in your heart? I understand, you know, people who might not know me, um, you know, if they might not believe it or think I'm just checking the box. And, you know, I, I feel like I've definitely grown more in these last, you know, six months than I have in the 28 years I've been alive. Had you given serious thought to if racing with NASCAR were to not be in your future, would that be too steep a price to pay for you? I don't think it would be too steep of a price to pay. You know, what I said was extremely hurtful, and I would fully understand if I was never allowed to race another NASCAR race again. But I hope, you know, I will get that opportunity to race uh, with them. With that platform, I think I could, you know, do some good things. <clears throat> James, you know, I have to say I appreciate his apology. I also appreciate the fact that he sat down with you. Last time I checked, you are a black man, and he's looking at you face to face with a word that's very hurtful, and it did not seem to be an awkward conversation between the two of you. Gail, he really has owned the problem. He's embraced it. He's looking to make positive changes. Uh, look, I discern the young man's heart.
Yeah. And um, I think he's the real deal. Go ahead, Gail. He said he's gone through a rehabilitation process over the last six months. What does that mean exactly? What does that include? And what do you make of that? So uh, he's gone through sensitivity training. He's gone through diversity inclusion training. He's gone down to the Legacy Museum uh, and Memorial in uh, Montgomery, Alabama. Look, and he's done all of this and a lot more out of the public spotlight, sitting down with people like Jackie Joyner Kersey, uh, the former executive with Def Jam, Kevin Lyles. He's made all the right moves. At the end of the day, it's whether or not there's a heart change. I discern it because if people are doubting whether or not he should get reinstated, which is up to NASCAR, mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is we know people cannot consistently perform in a manner that is inconsistent with who they really are. His body of work suggests that he's really the real deal. All right, second chances. You know, we live in a cancel culture. It's good to see that he's making an effort. Thank you very much, James Brown. Always good to see you.